Hey everyone, welcome back to Control. Last time, I made a pretty thorough inspection of the executive sector. So this time, let's go scope out the rest of containment. Better not get blamed for this mess in the next performance review. I have a cat to feed. Yeah, I don't think you need to worry about your cat, Langston. Not right now. Starting from the Panopticon, because this is the side that we've already searched. And also because there's a secret hidden in this fire break that's really hard to spot unless you're coming at it from this direction. Hoping to find a lot of remote thoughts this time. Because I know I need a ton of them. Anyway, on into security. Pretty sure I've already searched here fairly well. And across the way there is the door to the Prime Candidate program. That's our next destination, so I'm going to skip it for the moment. Could head straight out into logistics, but I definitely want to go through the medical wing. If for no other reason, then there are two side missions that I need to do down here. Mold's gotten in here too? Alright. Let's get cleaning, she said, fucking her gun. Yeah, the mold has been in here the whole time, I believe. And charge actually does enough damage to kill those guys right through the healing. It's my healing now. Don't imagine there's anything to levitate to inside the walls. Ah, and also for some reason or another, We've got Hiss nodes here now. They weren't here our first time. I need to take out the third one before the first one reappears. And it doesn't appear that I was successful. Also, there was one of the mold spores that I'm searching for attached to that node. All right, those are cleared out. And while I'm on the search for mold, there's the hand chair. And also, it looks like an enemy appeared, but I don't see one. At least it stopped moving. Easy peasy. Yeah, if you read the story carefully, you realize this is the altered item that Arish and his friends were sent to deal with. The one that caused gravitational anomalies during a full moon found in a warehouse in New York. And it's really creepy, and I have no idea why anyone would ever sit on it. Anyway... The thing I remember about this mission is that one of the mold spores is hidden behind that door that's completely molded up. And it is more or less impossible to find just by looking for it. There should be another one on the ceiling of one of these shower cubicles. Unless I already shot it? Nope, there it is. There's got to be at least one in this room. Oh, there's one. I was almost worried I was going to run out of space to search. Oh, something I didn't... F 
find when I was in this room the first time. That's a high-level launch efficiency mod. Very good. And there we go. That's the spore everybody misses. Which means that I've managed to miss one that nobody misses. Can't possibly be any farther in that direction, although there is a level 6 door that I'll need to open. Now I'll come back for that in a sec. I want to finish with the mold. I want to make sure to do all of Ati's missions as early as possible for reasons that will eventually become clear. It just attached to the floor down here or something, maybe? Oh, nope. There it is. I was looking at the door the first time and didn't bother to look up. Three ability points. An excellent reward for a not particularly challenging side quest. And this, I guess, is the medical brig. Mark Gibson, male, age 28, returned from the astral plane approximately 13 minutes ago. This was his 21st dive. Patient is experiencing migraine-like pain, intense pressure behind the eyes, and partial blindness. He has no recollection of his time in the astral plane and appears severely disoriented. Preliminary examination revealed no immediate cause, so we will be sending patient for x-rays and... What the fuck is that thing? God, it burst right out of him. Call Black! Get Marshall! I believe that was the introduction of the astral spike to the real world. I'm trying to remember whether Mark Gibson was the same name that we heard in that first astronaut tape when we found the X-ray light box. Don't remember. Don't particularly care at this point. Nothing back down that corridor, I don't think. And there shouldn't be anything in most of the shelters that I could levitate to. There was, however, another level 6 door in this office. And a lot of enemies who could potentially yield more remote thoughts. So, even if I could skip the combat here, I don't want to. Should be nothing new in any of the wards. Actually, I don't know whether those are wards or offices. Or whether there's enough of a difference to be worth worrying about. So yeah, even opening this door immediately when you can is not a good idea if you don't have the mold vaccine. But since I do, I can safely walk through this kind of nightmarish place. And it's just a bathroom with a couple more chests. Entropic Echoes and high-level mods I'm probably never going to use. Well, admittedly, Shatter Projectile Choke is not too bad if you've got the extra slot. But I'm going to go for extra projectiles over that anytime. Alright, good old logistics. This room is gigantic. And there is actually something to be seen up here. This is another very recent discovery of mine, and probably one of the most important secret items in the game. Not because of any of those upgrades that I just got, but because of this. This, esteemed audience, is the Tennyson Report. This is what Trench was looking for copies of and disciplining anyone who was caught with a copy of it. 
And I think this may tie into the use of words like thaumaturgical in some of the really old documents. That the modern executives are pushing for more science in the Bureau, and somebody doesn't seem to like that. And I don't know what further significance that might have. Yeah. Some of those late launch upgrades are going to be great, but I think I kind of have to go with more energy for now because I'm so severely underleveled in that respect. And I could get launched for basic enemies. I don't think I want that. Because I don't really like throwing enemies at other enemies. Ah. This, that's another upgrade I really want to get. Need one more ability point, and I'm sure I'm going to find it somewhere in the sector, so I'll hang on to it for now. Looking for any more ceiling cubbies, but it seems highly unlikely that I would find any. So I'm going to head back toward the sector elevator for the moment, and come back to this and go off into the wings and the sealed threshold. Admittedly, that would have been a really good time to have the ability to launch enemies. Grabbing a hiss charged and throwing it at the nearest enemy is one of the best strategies there is. Come back, friend orb. At the very least, healing is largely irrelevant when you're dealing with hiss charged. Because when they go in for their exploding attacks, it's all or nothing anyway. Where'd the cluster go? There it is. It's trying to hide in a desk. Here we go. I'm full on health anyway, but now I've got even more protection. And all of my attempts to launch stuff are failures. I can do better than this. Don't worry. Oh, wow. That, that hiss cluster is not able to keep up with my incredibly fast running. Sonic the Hedgehog, eat your heart out, I guess. Yeah. Charge also not particularly effective on hiss elevated. I don't think it's really because they can dodge the attacks as such. They're just really hard to hit, and they're not usually near a solid wall you can cause an explosion against. So I think it is probably possible to get up into the pipes in the ceiling. There just doesn't appear to be any reason to do that. There's nothing actually up there. Except for the yellow. I don't know why it's yellow. But oh well, my search does not reveal any new secrets. I do get to stand on top of a fluorescent light for a second though. That's... that's kind of neat. I look up so infrequently in this game. Alright. So, let's head down the sealed corridor. I don't remember if I've even checked all the bathrooms in this room. I'm pretty sure I have, but it's really hard to keep track. The problem is I don't remember which direction the sealed corridor actually is from here. I could go to the motel cord and go through in that direction, but I actually want to come through the other way. 
pretty sure I checked this shelter, too. In fact, I think I did it while Horowitz was still alive. Yep, more identical bathrooms. I believe the sealed corridor entrance is that away. Somewhere off this wing. I don't remember where exactly. I keep thinking it's a door on this side of the room, but no, of course not. That just leads back to central logistics. As do all of the doors on the side that are to central logistics. Don't worry. I'm going to smart any second now. Yep, the door right up top there. Just give myself time to fight a couple more enemies. I don't see any remote thoughts, so I'm not going to bother picking up whatever there was. I want to look around here really carefully, because this place is entirely optional. I don't know why it sounds like the music is skipping like that. I think that might actually be the way the music sounds. Not a sound playback issue or anything. Yep, there's the turntable. Still completely boxed in and red. This room where enemies appear fairly often. Not today, though. And the control point nearest the objective I need to complete. Did I come into here before? Think I did. Alright, let's get to it. Head back through the gigantic mass of clocks. And the safe room is right around here. As well as a bunch of other stuff to do. Alright, couple of hits to fight. No big deal. But this is also where the paper lantern is hiding. I don't know why she says up. Looks like you need to hit that shield harder. Yeah, I don't know whether I can damage it by just throwing stuff at it or whether I actually need an explosion. Yeah, usually I grab a fire extinguisher or something and throw at it, but I don't see one around, so let's try this. Does not appear to be working. Oh, oh there we go. It's, all that stuff is gone. It wasn't 
so bad. Yeah, this is the lantern that guy wrote a gushing review of. And yes, the characters on the side do in fact say, Ramen. I know at least that much Japanese. This is the safe room Well showed me. I'm worried about the fact that it's open. Great. More clocks. Yeah, I think I came in here before. Just to show you how far we could get without levitation. And, yeah, this was not here last time I was in. This control point was added in the most recent patch. Still short of remote thoughts for an upgrade. But... Yeah, now that we have levitation, we can get across that gap and also get to the chests that are way up there. There's a boss we're going to need to deal with. You could possibly kind of see the anchor just out of the corner of your eye there. I can't get up there. Need to find a safe place to land. So they've added some control points near some of the boss fights. We saw the mold one earlier. And there will be one more that I'll point out when we get there. All of it just to make it slightly less of a pain to have to walk back to the boss every time you die. Yeah, I think this ledge is where I'm going to have to start in order to get to those chests. Hopefully I don't go far enough in to activate the boss fight just yet. Can't get to it from this side, but I can get to that one. There we go. It's kind of hidden around the corner from where I was before. Tricky to get to, except for straight on. Mm, tons of entropic echoes, at least. And I was kind of looking to see if I could fall off the back there, but... There's an invisible wall. I can't move any farther. So, alright, let's go deal with the anchor. And I don't think C's Accelerator is going to do me much good in this fight. Uh, launch efficiency is going to be my ability of choice, so I'll just slip on a mod for that real quick. And, yeah, charge is probably the best weapon to have if I must have a weapon. Is that? It's the sphere. The one that moves in concert with the anchor. It's making more clocks. Yeah, it spits out copies of whatever it comes into contact with. In this case it was a clock. And so we want to throw a clock into it. Now the pattern for this guy is pretty simple. It'll just rotate 90 degrees each time, facing a different platform, and then open up and spit a bunch of clocks. You've just got to throw stuff into it before it spits out the clocks, because they will hurt you a ton. And then, because that's really simple, it'll spawn a bunch of enemies. Lots of hiss charged, a couple of just hiss guards on the ledges. And the tricky part is really keeping track of which direction it's going to face next so that you don't miss it when it spits a clock in your direction. The big red clocks do a lot more damage than the little ones, but you can hit it with anything. It's gonna face this way.
That actually didn't do too much less damage than the other red clocks, I think. There's one red clock on each ledge, but I don't actually recommend moving around trying to keep up with it. It's already facing to the right, so there. There's a point in the fight where it'll just open in each direction and very rapidly spit out a bunch of clocks. I want to see if I can get... Now that's not even facing the right direction. It should be facing left. And I would fly out to the right and try to hit it at an angle, but not while there are enemies around. No, I think that's a trophy for defeating enough hiss. So it should face me this time. That must be the altered item. I did not expect that to go so well. And that's that's the joy of tons of launch damage against an enemy that can only be damaged with launch, I guess. There. No wonder the rangers had such a hard time with that one. And yeah, the anchor is safely back in the Panopticon, and I've got another untapped potential as my reward for completing that fight. As well as some ability points and a couple more upgrades and items. So yeah, definitely going for that ability that I was looking at before and wasted all my points before I could afford it. All the usual considerations about things I could get, but new abilities are always the priority. And this one is really good. A ground slam. And one point short of more of the basic upgrades. But let's see, between spin and charge... I can get the third level of either of them. And then just a couple more remote thoughts and I'll be able to upgrade Shatter. Not gonna worry about it yet, because I don't use either of those weapons very much. I'll see which one I feel like I need. And yeah, there's the Ground Slam. At this point, it takes up all of your energy to do. And I think until the DLC added an additional level of energy that you could get, there wasn't a way to have enough energy to ground slam and do anything else. And I step out of the safe room and I'm immediately assaulted by another named Hiss. There we go. Just clob him on the back of the head. And I suddenly remember I forgot to put my Seize Accelerator mod back on. And you can probably see why I rely on it so much. Because Seizing is great, but it takes so long. Okay. Back to the proper loadout. And get rid of another redundant mod. Velocity boost. I don't even remember what level blue is. Ah, it's worse. Eh. Might do some maintenance later. I don't think I was in here before. I don't even remember this place existing. But it's just a couple more empty bathrooms. Alright, we're almost back to where I first entered the clocks. I just don't remember where that path actually is from here. 
That's progress. It's back toward the control point I was just at. Which is the one that used to be the closest to the anchor. And I think that's the way I need to go. That hallway on the lower floor. Yeah, I don't expect to find too much additional stuff on the way. Well, there's this office here that I can't get into, but there is a radio in there. And this, I think, is the only way to turn it on. Oh, well, I don't recognize the music. May as well head back up here. You can get into here the other way without levitation. But being able to levitate sometimes opens new possibilities. Not this time, though. This time I'm just finding a whole lot of nothing. Don't worry, though. There is something else to be found along the way. I know that much. Yeah, it's the spare footage. We don't have time to stop and watch it again. Alright, we're back at the big area that looks like one of the logistics wings from the very beginning of this whole thing. There's just a tiny bit more space to check out, but before we do that, I've actually completed Langston's shopping list, so let's go back to the Panopticon. And we can talk to him, let him know that we've got all of his altered items contained. Provide any assistance at this time, sir. Only if you can reboot the cell door protocols without manually accessing them. Sir, we are not capable of completing that task. Please assign us a different task. Why are you talking like that? You know what? Never mind. I'll take care of it. I found all those missing altered items. All of them? Wow, you have a gift, ma'am. But those weren't all of the altered items missing from the Panopticon. The hiss must be making them restless. We've had several more containment breaches. How many of these things did he lose? How many? Just a couple. Should be no problem for you. I really appreciate your help. Really, just super. Yeah, nothing new to say, at least. I'll see you later, Langston. Hey, listen to the... I'll be here, like always. No, oh, he was going to tell the cell number 69 joke. 69. And then he skipped the joke and jumped straight to the punchline. Anyway, so we've got a new list of stuff that he wants us to round up. And a few more ability points. I think launch damage is going to be my best bet for what's about to happen. Plus, if I can save up 8 points, I can get one of the best upgrades. I would really, really like to spend my upgrade points on Pierce, which is not yet available for the upgrade. But... The second list of altered items would have the rubber duck on it if I hadn't already caught that. Otherwise, it's just got the mannequin, which is actually in the Prime Candidate program, and the flamingo, which we read a little bit about. And yes, I'm studiously checking every part of this room and ignoring the glowing pink door that was not there before. And there's the flamingo. That's got to be. 
be an altered item. Yeah, so this works a lot like the traffic light did, where it'll send you back to the start if you do the wrong thing here. It's not immediately apparent what that is, but I'm pretty sure you just can't touch the parts of the floor that are rippling upwards. So if you're very careful to manage your levitation time, it's not too difficult. And there's nothing on the TV. Don't even know why the TV is there. This thing again. But yes, we have a refight with former on a much smaller platform this time. Oh so, yeah, definitely going to skip the seize accelerator for this fight. I think launch efficiency will do it again. What does this thing want? Is it fighting the war? And again, the best strategy is to throw its own black orbs back at it. I just managed to miss that every time. So, not doing particularly well this fight. Maybe this would have been a good idea to upgrade spin before this fight. To be honest, I can't tell what's going on, and it's not safe to move. I don't know how I didn't fall there. I never did like flamingos. Too... pink. Yeah, and the door no longer exists. Oh, right, I forgot to check the Anchor Procedures document. Loss of fingernails. It's kind of weird that the Flamingo supposedly altered the weather. They never saw it actually doing that. But then we did see an actual effect from it with this weird corridor warping thing that it did. I still don't know what it does. Like Some of these altered items, I can tell why they have the effects that they have. Some of them, I have no idea. I'm gonna go ahead and fight these guys, because they're finally dropping some remote thoughts, and again, I'd like to be able to afford a different upgrade, because I think I'm pretty much done with spin. I do keep grabbing things other than what I want to grab, and the final launch upgrade, believe it or not, will help with that. So let's see how I'm doing. I'm one remote thought short. And I can't tell what it would take to upgrade Pierce. It won't show me until I have some of them. Well, alright. Eventually, I'm sure I'll get around to doing all the necessary grinding. But in the meantime, 
that should cover everything in the containment sector. So join me next time as we head to the research sector and finish our tour of the building. See you then.